By 1986, a brand new sound is starting to form. There's a brand new machine called the SP-12. It comes with a floppy disk, but you can create your own samples. Then in 1987, Emu System introduces the SP-1200. It has more sample time, a smaller 3.5 floppy disk drive, and you can combine it with anything at this point. Of course, the Akai S950 and the S900 are very popular. But Akai then releases a brand new sampler, the S1000, which is now a stereo sampler. And this is the formation of a brand new sound in recording. It's the boom and the bap. It gives you much stronger drum sounds. Also, it's consistent. Now, until this time, most people are just actually putting a drummer in and they're trying to get a band together and create some sort of project. Even if you're a songwriter, you're trying to do this. But the invention of a drum machine that you can add your own samples to opens up a huge door for you to create really great projects and be consistent with your sound. Then in 1988, Akai releases the MPC-60. It's not just a drum machine, it's a sampler, drum machine, and sequencer, and a MIDI production center. It can do everything. This makes it easier to do sessions in the studio and to continue the series of using boom bat. You can sample from other samplers and actually get samples from records anywhere now because you have the ability to chop out, kick, drums and snares and build your library. They're not just chopping these samples out, they're trying to build up a collection of drum patterns. And the best way to do it at this time is to use breakbeat records. They get these records that have sections where just the drummer's playing and maybe the bass player too as well. They get those sections and chop them out and are starting to loop the section so it plays over and over. Now this becomes a problem later on. One of the most popular loops to use is the James Brown Funky Drummer. Now they'll use a loop and they'll also get a section of music from a certain song they feel will go along with the beat. This becomes very popular, but there's a big problem brewing. A lot of these guys do not know the laws for copyright protection. And then, in 1989, on September 26, Cold Chillin' Records introduces a brand new song with a new artist. His name is Biz Marquee, and the song is called Just a Friend. It becomes a huge hit. By 1990, the song has gone platinum. But also, there's a big problem. They have no copyright protection and didn't secure the copyright protection they needed. So a guy from a group called the Monkees, Mickey Dolenz, sues Cold Chillin for copyright infringement. It's a big case. Cold Chillin loses the rights to everything. They make no money on the record. Mickey Dolenz collects millions of dollars for this big huge hit just a friend and now everything must change everyone is looking at this case they want to figure out how much they can sample what is the legal amount they can sample and can they sample little samples big samples kick drums snare drums is there going to be a problem with taking samples from records say someone recorded this sound so does that mean they own it if I go? You can't just have a, a record that's made up of everybody else's records and then not pay them for it. You pay for a guitar, you pay for a piano, you pay for anything else that you make a song with. By ignoring the rules, they came up with a whole new way of thinking about music. It's actually taking sounds and meshing them together and putting them all in time to come up with something totally different. At the end of the day, the court said, not only is this copyright infringement, but we see criminal prosecution in line for this one. We never anticipated, like, getting someone to pay for James Brown going, <laughs> and that's it. I didn't even know what sampling was, and I didn't know anything about it until people say, you're, they're sampling your drums. We live in a remix culture now, and the laws have to change to be able to help that culture do what it has to do. It's sort of like, like a bad dance move or something like that. You, you, you think the people doing it should be embarrassed for behaving this way, you know? Or you, you think the people doing it should be 
self-aware enough to understand that what they're doing is cheap and, and, and easy, and everyone else can tell that it's cheap and easy. Rock and roll was lazy, you know, three chord, you know, everybody would look down on basic rock and roll when people like saying, that's not music, bop, bop, and loom, and... The argument that a sampler is no different from any other instrument is absurd. It's absurd because no other instrument allows you simply and easily to take someone else's life's to work. Disclose the samples from the very, very beginning. I think it was Stakes is High where it was the first album I recall where we sat down in the beginning of the album. Like the record company made sure, like, you know what, let's make sure we speak to our whoever you want to clear samples, and they went through a list of like, well, George Clinton is in litigation with Westbound, so don't mess with his stuff right now. Uh, George Harrison don't like rap, don't mess with him. Like, we actually had a list of people not to touch. Like, when you're going through a rights clearing process, you really need to identify all the different people who own all potential elements of that particular sample or musical element and make sure that they've agreed to what you want to do. And that can be um, very time consuming because there's a lot of people involved in making music. To create requires the permission of somebody else. And it's that transformation which has been radical and recent. Our Copyright Act was basically last rewritten in 1976. So we're operating with a lot of antiquated assumptions about what musical creativity is. It is cheaper, easier, and more predictable if you want to cover somebody's song entirely than if you want to take three seconds of somebody's song. As you can see, there's a lot of problems with sampling. Even today, people aren't sure of what they can take and what they can't. But the best thing to do is to get copyrights for anything you want to sample. But small samples seem to work. Combined with different records, you can build a song up and not have to pay copyrights. <laughs>